Greetings and welcome to the Elephant TV. My name is Joe Kobuthi. Today I'll be speaking to Dr. Ngala Chone. Uh, Dr. Ngala is a historian, uh, an academic, uh, researcher and writer uh, based in here in Nairobi, Kenya. Karibu Ngala to the Elephant. Asante Joe. Asante sana. Uh, I'd like us to just uh, kick this conversation off uh, with, a, with, a, with a small, just to contextualize uh, uh, this, this conversation. Uh, of course, I mean now now it's 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 out in the open about uh, the BBI the BBI ruling or the High Court, uh, the repeal is going on, uh, but certain certain, certain thing that uh, that struck me and I think many other Kenyans are reading the the, the High Court judgment was uh, was was really uh, the manner in which uh, the, the High Court uh, castigated the the proponents of the BBI and the BBI process uh, on how. Mm. Cavalier, it was it was undertaken. How, you know, to, to quote the, the Kenyan adage, you know, a mtadu kind of mtadu kind of uh, spirit of how the whole thing was done, you know, uh, just yeah. you know by a few a few members of the political class and uh, used state machinery, etc. etc. So, my my question, I mean, to you, Ngala, is if how 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 did we how did we get here with a kind of with a political class that is in a sense, a very, very cavalier and very, you know, that do kind of thing toward, towards towards uh, judicial processes, the rule of law, uh, the state, the Kenyans. And historically, have you been here before? Um, thank you, Joe. And thank you for having me again um, on, on this discussion series on the elephant, which I think uh, very important to give um, historical perspective, uh, deep analysis to what is happening in the country in the run-up to the next elections in 2022. Precisely. Um, um, to answer your question, I think, I think that um, uh, when we were discussing this uh, uh, a few weeks ago, um, is that, yes, this kind of logic has been there before. Um, and, and, and usually I like to start off with, with, with sort of like the original scene of the Kenyan state itself. Um, um, uh, we, you know, the, the Kenyan state is a, is, is, is a post-colonial state. And, and um, it has always been argued that um, um, it was not fundamentally reformed at independence in 1963. So that the form, the logic of governance during the colonial period is a logic of governance that continued um, um, in the post-colonial period, which right. is to say that Kenya began life um, um, as, a, as a heavily administrative uh, colony where a few individuals, uh, in this case, um, uh, colonial ad administrators, um, um, had the power uh, uh, to decide um, the ongoings uh, around, 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 around the territory in terms of economy, the society, um, uh, and also, and also uh, uh, laws. And, and you know, that then led to a very centralized uh, political system with all uh, administrative, economic, uh, and political power concentrated uh, in Nairobi, and set of government that was headquartered in Nairobi, and this is the kind of uh, the kind of institutional landscape in which Kenya became independent in 1963. Right. Now, uh, even though we became independent um, um, with a constitution that actually was designed to to restructure that system in in terms of in terms of decentralizing serious powers and functions of government from Nairobi away, away from Nairobi to, to eight regions, in this case, Majimbos, um, by 1964, that centralized system had, had, had um, um, reorganized itself. You know, in fact, now, even under a very powerful executive president, um, um, in this case, Jomo Kenyatta. And therefore, uh, for the next um, uh, 20 years or so, um, um, Kenya, you know, underwent through um, um, and, 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 and an elite con, con, consensus of domination, where where a few elites um, 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 elected from different uh, districts and, uh, uh, during that time um, um, surrounded Jomo Kenyatta at the center, and it was through these individuals that the state was legitimated across the territory, right. um, um, and therefore uh, a number of you know uh, processes like the edification of Kenyatta. As the as the Baba or Taifa, um, um, you know, all all these kind of things, all the, all these kind of processes ensured um, that 
that a, a small elite will dominate the rest of the population and keep inequalities and serious questions uh, that were asked during the 50s, during the national, during during the independence movement, were, were not asked during the 1970s. Um, but of course, uh, we know that this system will collapse, especially during the Moi regime. Um, and there'll be serious fragmentation at the center, um, um, which then opens up the multi-party, uh, the return of, of, of multi-party politics chapter in the 1990s. And of course, we know that that chapter was also associated with a lot of violence. That violence, of course, is, is a direct result of the fragmentation of, of the elites at, at the center that took right. place during the Moi regime. Mm. Um, so they sort of they sort of um, um, a brief union, especially of Kikuyu and 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 Luo political elites that removes Kanu from power in two thousand and two, um, 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 and and but even that I, I call it brief because because by two, by two thousand and five there's already disagreements around what the new constitution should look like. Mm. In this case, the Bomas draft. Um, and therefore, I'm talking about the, the, the rift between LDP, which was the party under the leadership of Raila Odinga, and uh, National Alliance of Kenya, uh, NAK, which was mm. in the leadership of Mwai Kibaki, who was then the president. You know, these parties, of course, we know, had formed a coalition named uh, the National Rebel Coalition, or, mm. or NARC, mm. NARC. And therefore, uh, fragmentation is again caused um, or happens in the NARC coalition. Um, at the center of which was 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 a new constitutional draft, uh, the, the Bomas draft, which then later became the Wako draft, after 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 it had been quote unquote mutilated by the then Attorney General Amos Wako, um, for the for the very same purposes of recentralizing power at the center, you know. So it, this is these are these have been historical cycles that you know was kind of happening again in two thousand and five. Um, and, and therefore, and, and with that, and with that debate, and with that disagreement, the seeds of the 2007 post-election violence were planted. So then we go to violence 2007, and 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 there we see um, actually the risks of serious fragmentation at the center of, of elite fragmentation. You know, um, that that if that is not checked, then then we, we might even lose the country. It is under this context that the new constitution 2010. Uh, 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 came to be, you know, after searching for a new constitution for about 20 years. Now, there is something I have to say there, uh, uh, here that first and foremost, um, I, think, I think that what we are now facing going towards 2022 is a serious generational, um, um, it's a crisis of, of generational transition in our politics um, in this way. One, um, the the most important political players at this, you know, today uh, we're talking about Raila Odinga and, and Uhuru Kenyatta, are directly descendant from the political elite of the sixties. Mm. Um, uh, you know, Uhuru's, Uhuru, Uhuru's father being the first president and Raila Odinga's father being the first vice president. Um, the fifties and sixties are a very important period in our political history and our political development. Um, um, it is a time when the, those political elites that came to dominate Kenyan politics for the next 50 years um, were able to gain the were able to gain control over the means of production, in this case land, labor, and capital, hmm. um, but also the power, even institutionally, the power to reproduce themselves. Mm. Um, 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 it is they gained that during the 1950s, 1960s. Mm. Um, and, 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 and it has been the most durable political elite, actually, when you, when you, when you look at developments throughout the continent in Africa. Right. Uh, the Kenyan political elite has been the most durable political elite that has stayed in power for the longest period of time. Mm -hmm. you know, in, in many African states, uh, uh, many African states went through you know, military coups in 1670s. So there was a lot of change. But in Kenya, you see a very durable political elite um, um, that, 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 that does actually still in power um, at, at, at this point. Um, um, the, only other, the, the only episode in our history, in our political history, that threatened to remove this political elite that had gained power in the 50s and 60s um, is during the Moi regime. It is, during the, it is during the Moi regime, even though he tried so hard 
could, was not able to remove them. But it was during that time that that the the political elite that had gained power in the 60s was really threatened, um, um, or, or their position um, um, uh, was 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 actually really threatened. Um, um, but also, what happens during the Moi regime? You're talking about 80s, 90s, is something very interesting. Um, uh, Moi, we 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 usually are very mute as historians about 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 when when, when it comes to this legacy of of, of, of of the Moi regime is that he actually really redistributed authority, power, and resources away from the regions that had been favored by not only by 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 the colonial state but also by 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 by, by Jomo Kenyatta. Mm. Um, um, for, so, for example, the opening of Moi University in Eldoret, you know, the the the, the, the in opening, yeah, yes, exactly. So this kind of redistributing, you know, opening new T zones, um, 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 bringing uh, people from 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 his backyard um, into serious positions of of authority and power in government, mm. um, 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 reformulating what was the old KADU Kadu yes. Alliance, you know, uh, bringing people from areas such as Western Kenya, the coast, into the center of government, people like Sharif Nasir, people like Mudamba, uh, Mudavadi, you know, the father of Musalia Mudavadi. Um, um, uh, pe bringing people from Mukambani, for example, uh, Mulu Mutisia, and then Kalonzo Musioka after mm. that. Uh, it, was, it, was a, it was a way in which uh, Moi was really trying to um, uh, re re focus, refocus attention, brother. I think refocus attention from, you know, central Kenya and the highlands. Um, um, that had been the focus of of, 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 the, of of the political economy of the country. It is Moi, for example, was the first president in Kenya to appoint a Somali minister. You know, this is this is also very very important to kind of remember. So part of that process, especially by the 1990s, when um, the country is really informalizing, but not only but not but not only Kenya, but throughout the world. You know, this is the time of. Um, uh, Bretton Woods institutions taking hold of our economy, um, um, asking the state to get out of the economy, um, 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 liberalizing the economy, liberalizing politics, and, and, and which then leads to a lot of informalization. This is the time where um, we see an emergence um, much later of, of, of a younger, more entrepreneurial, um, 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 class of people um, 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 who, whose main difference from the younger generation that took power in the 50s and 60s from the colonialists was that they were really bought and brought and bred in Kenya, you know, through, through the struggles that the country was going through at that time. Uh, these were not necessarily English speaking elites, these were not necessarily university educated. Uh, elites, but people who had learned the system, you know, what work will hustle, as mm. we said. You know, mm. uh, uh, this is really where the hustler generation is becoming crafted in the 90s uh, um, and the early 2000s. You know. Right. Um, people like I, people like the Sonkos, you know, people like Hassan Yohos. The cases. Um, uh, right. um, you know, right. the, the, yeah, the people around YK92, you Precisely. know, we're talking mm. about, you know, and, and they, and they are, you know, they're, they're on record by by saying that uh, you know YK ninety two was originally a group of twenty eight young business people in the nineteen nineties, um, mm -hmm. um, all these people were, had had learned the system, you know, had 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 gotten some contracts here and there. Mm -hmm. um, um, they were not; they were very different in character from the elite that had taken power in the fifties and sixties, which was becoming old in the nineties, right? Right. Um, the Mike Bakis and the and the and the John Michukis, they, they, were, they were a bit different from that. And from mm -hmm. this generation that I'm talking about, William Bruto comes from this generation, right? Right, right. So, so, so what happens is that because also, um, despite them being different in character and form from the older elite, uh, um, um, they did not or were not really proposing a serious transformation of this country's politics. Um, um, they were not proposing a socialist trajectory, for example. Mm. Um, um, uh, they were really capitalists um, themselves, and that's the real um, um, contribution, if you like, that 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 they were promising is that they also wanted a piece of the pie. They also wanted to be involved in politics, to to be involved in in decision making in the country. Mm. 
Mm. Um, but they will begin to make this claim much, much later, I think is what we are seeing now. Um, um, before that happens is that they were also used, um, um, this new generation of entrepreneurial space, of, of, of entrepreneurial elites, um, 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 were really at the service of the older political elite. Um, for some way, for some in, in some way or another, you know, um, um, William Bruto has has always repeated this claim. For example, in political meetings, that uh, you know he's the one who supported Uhuru Kenyatta, for example, until the last day in 2002 when he was defeated by Mike Ibaki. Um, 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 uh, William Bruto then then repeats uh, that he he really supported Raila Odinga, um, um, you know, in, within ODM. Yeah, in 2007, uh, uh, I, I think that leads, you know, Raila Odinga to becoming the prime minister. Um, um, you know, and we can we can talk about many many other people, including the Sonkos, who 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 at one point or another, you know, Hassan Jo, who who at one point or another, were very very crucial for the for the continued dominance of the older elite in our politics, until very recently. So I think until the handshake happened. And the BBI process was unleashed. This is when now we are beginning to see that that generation has become tired of being used, and they are also now on the door and they are knocking and they are saying, even us, we want to be, we want to be involved in the governance of this country. Mm. And this, I think, is at the heart of 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 of, of what we now call the hustler movement. Right. I mean, just I mean, just just even to 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 carry on this conversation around the hustler movement because the hustler movement in 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 many regards has also stoked the the the, the aspirations and hopes and dreams of of the youth of the youth in in this country, you know, because I mean, you you having in a country that uh, has less than one million graduates. Uh, less than 50 million people who, who are employed both formally and informally, but having a steady income, there's a huge swath of the population that, that, is, that, is, that is really uh, enamored by you know, this new kind of politics of Hassan Nation and ETC. But my question mm. would be, what was it about the Katiba 2010 that has also enabled, uh, enabled this, this uh, Carefully, let me call it carefully. Imagining the kind of politics to start, uh, to start emerge from the peripheries. What is it about the Katiba 2010, and and of and that has allowed this uh, this new kind of politics to start emerging? Mm. Um, so I'll 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 combine the answer to your question to to a question that you had asked earlier, and I, I don't think I I I I, I answered. Um, so I have argued elsewhere that. The new the, the, the Kenyan 2010 constitution um, was birthed by um, a context where elites in Kenya uh, were very distrustful of each other. Mm. This we had just come out of a post-election violence 2007, and 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 the political elite was quickly trying to reformulate the rules of the new rules of the game, so to speak. Um, um, but 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 while doing that, seriously distracting, the, the, not trusting each other, and this process is when I talk about lack of trust, it was, it was very clear. Um, if you look at what, what, for example, happened in Naivasha in in late two thousand and nine, um, um, when the harmonized draft then prepared by the committee of experts was presented to the parliamentary select committee of fourteen PNU members, the party of Mike Baki, and uh, I think thirteen ODM members, the party of Raila Odinga. Uh, then, um, because there was fear that the political elite may sabotage um, or may drag the process of looking for a new constitution, the guardrails for changing the, this constitution, but also for altering that process in itself, the way BOMAS was, was, uh, was, was uh, hijacked, were put very high. So that by the time that the committee of experts had collected views from Kenyans and had um, combined most, you know, a number of constitutional drafts before, including bombers, to produce a harmonized draft, it was very, very difficult then legally to change um, that document. Um, um, and in fact, no single amendment passed through parliament 
after the diversion deliberations into in 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 late in late 2009 and therefore we passed a constitution basically that was wholly um, um, uh, written by by uh, by people who are outside of parliament people who are outside of the political elite for the first time and that became our new constitution right, right? Um, extensive provisions on in terms of bill of rights um, and very clear in terms of a separation of powers between the three arms of government you know judiciary parliament and the executive um, and very clear also in terms of uh, the functions of the national government, the functions of county governments and the provisions around the revolution. Um, it even went ahead and spoke a bit about um, um, the ethics that are, that are required, you know, ethics that are required of a leader. Um, yes, and generally it promoted a language of public consultation, of, of, of participation in the governance process, in the development process, the respect of cultures, um, uh, right? Basically, just the respect of 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 of, of the public voice. Right. All this was a new kind of language in terms of a legal constitutional development that was brought in by the new constitution. But that, again, I'm saying, was possible because the political context at the time in which the new constitution was being passed was a political context of serious lack of trust between the political elites. So they did not have time to actually. Um, ensure that the constitution, but the draft that becomes the constitution is a constitution that will um, um, pay heed to the interest of the elite. You know, this, they didn't have time for that because they were seriously trying to fix each other using the constitution. And in the end, passed a constitution that actually um, 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 had seriously curtailed, if you like, um, uh, or changed the way in which power would be exercised. Uh, compared to the previous uh, or or the 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 retired constitution, um, so so two things. <clears throat> One, what is it about this new constitution that has sort of um, um, uh, let me say promoted this kind of hustler narrative, um, which is a distinctively youth led, I have to say, um, 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 and, and six. A, a sort of uh, change of the guard or change of the elite. <clears throat> it, is it is precisely because of that. I mean, um, um, I've been paying attention to what has been happening across the country since this new constitution uh, was passed in 2010, in terms of just what the constitution was doing, in terms of, in terms of how it was changing activism, in terms of how it was changing people's participation in public affairs. Right. Um, in a place like Lamu, for example, <clears throat> the new constitution was very pivotal. Um, 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 or it informed, for example, the formation of a, of a, of a local community-based organization mm. or um, that was an umbrella body actually of many organizations in Lamu called Save Lamu mm. um, um, that, that did not, was not formed to oppose um, uh, the Lapset project or the construction of a port in Lamu, but to seek the public's participation in that process, for example. Mm. So, so they, and they quoted a number of articles in the new constitution that for them, according to them, allowed them um, uh, to sort of organize in that way and to seek this public consultation in that manner. And they actually used the new constitution as well and the language, the language of rights that the new constitution had, had promoted to take the government to court and actually win a case, you know, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and even also sort of um, leveraged that success to also oppose um, the construction or the proposed construction of a coal power plant, which was which was going to be next to 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 the to the new port in, in Mando Bay. All this is possible because of what the new constitution had done, for example. Right. Right. And you can and there are so many there, there are so many examples of that nature, um, 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 where where people now are beginning to use the courts, the judiciary, the law, um, um, to petition certain key aspects of governance in the country. You know, so across the Lapset corridor, for example. You would see you'd see an emergence of organizations that will really really use the law um, 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 to petition certain processes of processes of 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 of, of, of governance. I'm talking about legs of uh, sorry friends of Lake Turkana, um, um, the Serima Indigenous uh, People's Movement. All these organizations in far flung um, uh, or what or what was what we formally uh, referred to as neglected regions of Kenya right. um, 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 using this new constitution to petition um, um, key aspects of, mm. of, 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 of governance that affected their lives. This, mm. this, this was an immediate, for me, this was like an immediate kind of 
uh, impact, if you like, of how the, this new constitution was changing politics in the country. Right. Um, 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 which is like saying that by constricting the powers of the executive, the executive is now meant to consult um, um, with many different kind of uh, players mm. um, um, in the governance process in a way that Mwaikibaki or Moi or Kenyatta was not required to do. Right. Um, um, it is that um, 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 restricting of the, exec the powers of the executive that has led to this kind of um, 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 emergence, if you like, of a, of a, of a sort of, of a sort of alternative force mm. that, that, that is claiming also some space in the, in, in the center of our country's politics. And this, is, and this, of course, I think is well represented by the Hasla movement. So, I mean, but so, I, I feel, sorry, yeah. No, no, so I mean, just, just, I mean, uh, so does the Hasla movement, is, is, it, is it an indicator of a new kind of politics that is emerging in our society? Yes. Um, so there are two, so there are two things. There's, there's a struggle here. Right. Um, and like I said, the struggle is generational. So you have a generation of elites, um, and like I said, directly descended from, from an elite of the 50s and 60s, the, the, the elite that took power from the colonialists, that was so used to ruling the country um, um, in a sort of boardroom-like way, which is uh, decisions are made in a small room in Nairobi, and they immediately uh, uh, permeate the, 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 the rest of the society, especially through the formerly powerful provincial administration. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So, 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 so Kenya and, um, you know, and, and I think I, I also had uh, uh, Dr. David Lee talk about this. You, 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 have, you have a cabal of elites in Kenya that still believe that um, um, less than 50 people can control events throughout the territory um, 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 from land, from security, um, 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 you know, from, from, from resource governance, all, all those areas, right? Um, that they, have um, the, 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 the technical and the political ability to determine the fate of the rest of the country. That is, that is how Kenya was run during the colonial period. That is how Kenya was run until 1990. That system has, be, has begun to falter. Um, um, and, and, and the process that has led to that has, has, has speeded up that, 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 that um, um, uh, process is, is elite fragmentation. Is a fragmentation of the elite. If the elite cannot agree on the rules of the game, it then becomes very difficult for a few of them to decide events across the territory. And this is what has been happening since the 1990s. Um, actually, if one was, if one is to summarize Kenyan politics in, since the 1990s, it is basically a story of elites always trying to look for rules of the game that all of them can agree with, and they have not been able to do that, right? Mm -hmm. Because they seriously don't trust each other. Um, um, now, BBI is. BBI comes to be in this manner. Um, <clears throat> um, Uhuru Kenyatta and Raila Odinga thinking that um, um, just because you have shaken hands, um, um, you will be able to rope in most of the country and, and, and that the country will follow you so that the law does not even really matter in this case. What matters is those personalities and what they wish. And therefore, their constituencies, in this case, the ethnic constituencies, will rally behind them. And even the constitution does not matter, right? Um, um, they have been proved fatally wrong. Um, um, it, it, it's almost as if saying that while the, while, while, while the country has changed, the political elite has not. Mm. Um, and, 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 and they still want to rule the country in a way in which, in the way in which the country was ruled in the 60s and 70s. And this is proving to be very, very difficult. And that's how, then to answer your question, um, this Hustler movement is representing a real challenge to a very traditional way of, of, of dominating, of domination in this country and of governance in this country. Right. And then, I mean, rightly so. I mean, you talk about two forces, you know, the, the Hustler nation, which, which, which you, 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 you correctly uh, paint, paint its history you know, from the the sub's generation to, I mean, what Pasalelo can tie the writer calls ridiculous generation, the generation that comes mm. out of through the struggle and through the hassle. And then it's mm. this contestation of this uh, emerging elite that is also, that is also yeah. generational with the old, in a sense, the old Lancaster respectability boardroom, you know, uh, mm. uh, 
uh, groomed out of you know the colonial the colonial experience of you know very British you know British high appetite mm-hmm. kind kind of kind of politics. But then the yes. question, and you're having these two forces. But then not the question would be because uh, where where do where where does now where where do we go in terms of new ways of civic organizing for the people? Because uh, in this conversation we're talking about two factions of elite. How where do the people come in, and 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 when they come in, how do we? How, what are some of the 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 the, the, the nodes that you have seen in terms of organizing and thinking uh, that uh, civic society and civil society uh, traditionally should start thinking about moving towards in terms of even as this new dispensation is 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 emerging. Mm. Um, well, so. We've, we've basically been doing analysis of, of the country's politics uh, so far. Mm. Um, um, but if you talk about um, interventions or how people should in, intervene, mm. I mean, okay, fine. So one um, is that I don't know where uh, this um, hustler thing is going to go. I don't know how far it's going to go in terms of changing our politics. I don't know. Uh, we, we are here to see. Initially, it was being discussed. Some people were throwing class analysis onto it initially. Mm. And, and I remember hearing uh, someone like Alonzo Musioka saying that, um, that uh, um, uh, you know, William Ruto is trying to unleash a class war. Mm. Um, um, I, I, I will not be that, uh, uh, <laughs> I, will not be, I will not be that certain that, 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 uh, class is an accurate has, been, has really become the dominant here. Yeah. I'm not sure that, yeah, I'm not sure that class has really become the dominant form of political mobilization in Kenya, through even through the hustler narrative, right? Mm. Um, um, the hustle narrative is basically, I think for me, has gained traction, if it has, um, um, through what's something I told you before, uh, this idea of the politics of Madarao. Yeah, and yes. I'll explain. So, so, so the thing about it, like, if, so even 2007, the, the politics of Madara were very powerful. The idea that people felt left out of not only the political process, but also the, the economy, hmm. you know, and, and, and you're talking about large swaths of the country feeling, right. having that emotion, right? The only difference is that it was expressed through ethnic frameworks or expressed through ethnic lenses, but the real emotion at the heart of the PV and now at the heart of the hustler movement is the is the idea that many many people in this country are feeling are feeling um, um, the basic yeah so wanaona medarauliwa by the political elite that they don't matter that their voice does not matter um, 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 and that and that also what they do productively does not matter for the economy the economy is being set up for high capital. The economy is being set up for large investors. You know, when you're talking about infrastructure development being the key development plank of this regime, mm. it is all meant for high investors, international investors. It's not meant for small scale farmers. It is not meant for small scale traders. It is not meant for actually um, um, and people who make up about 80%, uh, 85% of this economy. Right. So, 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 and this is the reaction. So it's, it's people, it's people feeling that, um, 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 you know, high level capitalist elitists um, right. and policies, right. right, have been dominating this regime and have neglected them. Right. So it is not that people want a socialist revolution per se, but is that um, um, people want to feel that the economy works for them mm. and that decisions are being made to benefit them. And they're not feeling that. And I think William Ruto is really, really kind of um, 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 cultivating uh, that, that sense of exclusion that, 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 that um, um, a large part of this country feels, in particular, even in central Kenya itself. Mm. Um, um, a lot of analysis has been issued that you know, the recent uh, results of the Kiambaba election is driven by that feeling. Uh, in itself, that that um, yeah, despite having a president from their region, people have felt excluded from mm-hmm. from from the process. In this case, BBI and and and, and the economy. So so I think I think that that is that is a, a crucial aspect to to pay to pay attention to. That this is not necessarily um, an, an evolution of a class based politics, 
um, 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 but but it's, it's sort of it's sort of more emotional than that. That 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 people feel that uh, feel that this political elite that has dominated the country since the 1950s, 1960s um, 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 needs, needs to go, but it needs to go because it has it has neglected them and, and it has basically. That feeling of Madarao is is it has it has political capital, is is is, is what I'm trying to say here. Um yeah, yeah. All right, I mean, I mean, just to be completely correct, uh, in Kiamba, uh, about 200 families own 80% uh, of the land, and the rest, 20% uh, yes. of the land is 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 occupied by 200 to two, uh, families, according to uh, statistics. Uh, but just yes. j just coming into this idea of politics of Madarao. Uh, and this and this rejection that your, your rejection of this this you know the Lancaster elite, uh, if you may call them yeah. that, uh, this this elite are, are the ones who curated the independence project. Uh, it was yes. in 1963, uh, in, in Jomo Kenyatta's speech, uh, he mm -hmm. he you know he he came up and said uh, we're going to eradicate poverty, disease and ignorance and dignity for all people and land justice and all these other things. So yes. So what are this contestation and this transition we're seeing? What does it mean for uh, not just the independence project, but also even for the institutions that were created to make this independence project a reality? I think that uh, it's, some, it's something that I've already kind of intimated that. So mm. the, the new constitution, 2010, or I should stop calling it the new constitution. It's 11 years old now. Um, um, the 2010 <laughs> constitution. Right. Um, um, has seriously altered that institutional landscape that was curated by the Lancaster um, elite. Right. Um, um, uh, I think for us, the judiciary is the one is institution that has shown us that things have really changed. Absolutely. Um, 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 when when the constitution was passed in 2010, I I am one of those people who was actually um, um, a, little, a little bit concerned that we've not really changed anything you know that that the president continues to to hold uh, a lot of power um, um and that and that through the political party he may he may he may also um uh, control and dominate parliament you know right. the legislative wing of of of, of, um, of 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 government um um so so actually i think it's only the judiciary um that that has shown us not not just through the bbi judgment but also, like I was mentioning, through the developments that have been happening since 2010, where people have been taking to court the government on various issues, um, uh, the examples I was, I was giving a, a, across the Lapset Corridor and in Lamu, for example, this has been happening. Um, 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 the BBI judgment, because it has garnered a lot of attention, maybe this is what more people are talking about, what has the Kenyan 2010 constitution done to um, the arrangement of power in this country? But, but, it, but it was already rearranging power anyway, since 2010, and people were using it uh, 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 to petition, to challenge, um, uh, to reject even some proposals that were coming from the government. And they've been successful in doing so. And I was hearing, uh, for example, uh, uh, CS Fred Matiangi the other day saying that um, um, a lot of government projects have stalled because of a lot of, because of seriously, <laughs> because of litigation. litigation but, yeah. but that for me, but, but that for me is to, is to say that um, um, the law is really working. And, and, and the law is really pushing back on, on, on the powers of the executive. So, so because the, the, the power of the Lancaster elite was rested on controlling the executive branch of government, um, um, and, you know, and, and through it, you know, the bureaucracy and, and the provincial administration, that, that was where the real power was. Um, um, uh, we are seeing that that power has, is slowly dispersing itself mm -hmm. um, through the, the Kenyan 2010 constitution. Um, um, so that is what I say is one of the most serious um, structural changes that have happened in Kenyan post-colonial politics that are really beginning to threaten the position of the of the Lancaster elite. That, in addition to now the emergence of 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 the of of the hustler generation, which, like I've said, can be traced to the 1990s, the time of informalization during right. the Moyo regime. Yeah, right. I mean, so lastly, lastly, before we wind up, then uh, for for the youth, for the youth in for the youth in Kenya, because there's this all these new contestations, uh, redistribution of power, uh, but as yet, if you look at if statistics are to be believed, 
uh, uh, we're still facing uh, aggressive underemployment, unemployment. So my question as an intervention to you as a part, as a part in short, where do the youth find themselves in this new contestation? And and in terms um, and where do they where do they need to start plugging in terms of civil organizing, political organizing, for people such that uh, this contestation works for them? Yeah. Hmm. Um, I, I, I'm I'm surprised that I'm I'm the I'm the one who will say this, but I think that the Kenyan youth uh, may want to look um, uh, across the across the Mediterranean and the Atlantic. Um, um, and borrow and borrow a leaf, not entirely, of how um, um, the youth in the West has been politicized um, in the last decade or so. I think for me, it's a very incredible phenomena uh, that has been happening there mm -hmm. in the in the West. Um, um, that that you know, powerful individuals have been brought down uh, for misbehaving uh, um, um, by by hashtags, for example. You know, um, um, and 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 we are seeing that the generation for us, for someone like me, for example, the, gen the generation that was only important when it comes to music and entertainment and fashion, um, um, you know, not not the generation, but but people for us who are, who are only important when it comes to music generation and fashion, um, 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 have have be have become distinctly politicized over the last decade. Right. Um, um, very extremely young people, you know, you know, nineteen twenty, uh, just coming out of high school and into college, um, trying to comment and to act on the world um, um, on on very serious political questions of the world. So I I, I think that um, um, for Kenya there are many questions to, that, that 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 need addressing. Um, of course, we also need to unpack this idea of the youth. Um, 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 it is. It is. We have different types of youth of young mm. people, right. but also that is not to say that there are no commonalities across this category, right? right. Um, um, in particular, in the way in which um, um, our country, our country's politics has affected the youth, um, mm. um, um, it has affected them in very similar ways. Mm. Uh, uh, in this case, um, when you're talking about unemployment, when you're talking about poverty, um, you find that it is a Sometimes it is even across classes. Um, um, children from well-to-do families and children from poor families, you'd find that they're, they're both uh, uh, usually unemployed and jobless. Um, um, that, that means there's a, there's a, for me, it means that there's a serious crisis of transition that, that if, if the means of production are still being dominated by, 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 by an old political elite, it will always create stagnation. It will always mean that a new generation may not rise up, may not come, may 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 not come to replace them, um, um, in business, in industry, um, and not just in employment, right? Right. So, so I, I think that I think that in terms of organizing, um, um, again, like I said, people should look further ahead and learn. But this model that was available to us and still is of uh, forming uh, community-based organizations. And, and looking for funding from Western donors, um, 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 I think I, I think that model needs to be rethought. Um, um, one way in which now activism has been very powerful is, for, for example, through social media and mm -hmm. through the use of digital technology. And 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 young people have been very effective users of digital technology. Um, 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 to project their voice, whether it's a commentary about um, um, issues that young people grapple with, from unemployment to reproduction, to, to sexual reproduction, sorry, um, 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 to romance and love um, and identity, it is those same similar platforms that young people should now begin to curate and ask serious questions about the politics of the country right. and how and how young people should mobilize and project their voice into the politics of the country. Now, when I say that, I'm 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 really really um, personally I'm really really invested and and, and 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 interested in seeing that young people in Kenya have power and power with a capital P. Is that um, it's 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 not this involvement of young people that you have always been seeing, um, which is to which is to um, um, have them um, um, write political songs for ODM or for NASA or for whatever or for Jubilee, 
and, and, and show up in political rallies. No, but actually young people presenting themselves for office, you know, running for office, um, 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 and petitioning the government um, um, in serious questions of governance um, through court cases, um, um, uh, through writing in the media platforms such as the elephant, this this is what I'm talking about. So so uh, the formation of organisations and, and 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 you know that 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 will run in terms of in terms of like Western funding will not be enough if more young people are to be involved in the political process. I think I think that um, um, organising in these kind of digital publics uh, around Twitter, around Facebook. But also in the streets is very important to begin to mobilize and to project the the, the voice of the young people um, in public so that we are heard. Um, 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 but also like really thinking about shifting attitudes in 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 ways in which this country's this country's politics have have has has been running. Um, 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 young people need to bring fresh ideas, and the only way to do that. Is through this kind of this sort of digital organizing um, um, that then begins to have an impact on 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 on, on, on not actually seeing on the streets. Mm. Dr. Ngala, I mean, uh, we leave it at that. Thank you so much for for giving giving us your time here, at the Elephant. Thank you, thank, thank you, you, Joe. Thank you so much. And for Always a pleasure. Great. Yeah. And for our viewers, be sure to subscribe, like, and follow us on our channels on Twitter, Facebook. Instagram and YouTube. Thank you so much and uh, Santeni Sana.